Hello everybody, my name is Michael Buchanan, and today we're going to be talking about the second chapter of Leadership, a Communication uh, Perspective. So, I've read, looked through the chapter, and I think the ones I like to talk about today, at least the, the interesting points, are the three different types of uh, leadership styles of communication. So there's the Democratic, the Authoritarian, and Laissez-Faire. Um, so a Democratic... You know, it sounds like what it is, you know, democracy, United States of America. Um, you know, leaders want, you know, people's perspectives, their thoughts, opinions. They listen to them. They make decisions sometimes um, on on their feedback from their employees, um, et cetera. That's a popular and probably the most direct style of leadership that a lot of companies use. Um, the other one's authoritarian. Uh, that's a cop. That's, um, you know, police officers. Um National Guard, anybody that basically tells you you need to get on the ground or or put your hands up in the air or whatever, um, they you know show them your license, driver's license is probably the, the most the most common. Um, and there's laissez-faire um, that is just complete absence. I don't even know why that's a style, but I guess that is a style. And I guess that happens in some places. It has something to do. I mean, it has everything to do with if people. If people respond, um, well, I guess that if that business is succeeding or not, and if you have a laissez-faire type leader, people that just don't even care that they're there. Um, but these guys, I like the Democratic the most. They kind of go into, um, you know, they get they involve the followers and get setting goals. So they they push their employees to set goals for themselves. Um, they need to be able to uh, to work on their own. They believe that they don't have to be there all all the time. Um, and anyway, as the chapter goes on, it talks about different types of theories. Um, it talks about like, the Michigan theory, uh, the Blake and McLean leadership grid. Uh, another thing I wanted to t touch on was the 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 behaviors, and I wanted to correlate this with the authoritarian and the democratic, not so much the laissez-faire, because that's just complete absence. Um, but there's test behaviors, and then there is. There is um, basically group behavior. So this group behavior is um, basically the, the person's focusing on the employees instead of the task. I mean, he's focusing on the task, but he's, he's also working. He's, the emphasis is to think of, like, um, as long as I can work on the employees, the task will get completed and we'll work at a more efficient rate versus if we're just working on the task, you turn your employees to robots and people that aren't people. And they're not going to be inspired to work, and you're going to be on them 24-7, and that's going to create um, animosity towards the leader and or the company. And they're not going to want to um, be productive for them. So some of these, some of these behaviors you know, included, I mean, it was, it was stuff, it was pretty simple. You don't have to even look at it. Uh, for, for, you know, a democratic leader and his task figures focusing on the employees, it talks about, you know, um, they're, you know, reaching out to those employees, talking about their feelings, where are they at in their life, where they're doing the job place, what they need to do, um, how can how can the leader make their work experience and their productive pr productivity go up? So it's more, you know, employee based versus the authoritarian style is I don't care what's going on in your life. You need to be here at seven, eight a.m. You need to work till five. You need to get this, 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 and this done, and I'm going to stay on you all day every day I'm not gonna leave you alone I don't really care what you have to say I just want you to do it this way and that's all there is to it and this is a way I think that um, you know people don't want to follow that people hate their jobs uh, because of bosses like that um, and overall the the the, um, the productivity goes down I mean imagine authoritarian leader leaving the office to go do something because he's got a doctor's appointment all of a sudden it's about him but usually he's a task-based guy, and he does he has been having task behaviors on his employees. Imagine if he leaves the office, those it's gonna be like leaving a bunch of monkeys in a room, and they're just gonna be going crazy, and they're not gonna get anything done. They're not gonna care. They're gonna just drag his name through the mud, whatever. I'm sure people do that anyway on both sides of leaderships. Um, you know, of course, the book says that you know it, it talks about you know being a democratic leader, but I think you need to have a little bit of both. You know, I think. Too much of one or the other is not good because I think if you're too much of a democratic leader and, you know, you don't really set your boundaries. I mean, 
you need to set your boundaries, but if you people might see that you don't, and then you might get ran over, and they might say, well, this guy, you know, he's too cool. He's not going to care. I can show up 30 minutes late. I can show up an hour late, you know, or they might just find you. They might not even respect you, and so I feel like you have to have a little bit of authoritarian type. You need to separate. I think you need to have a separation of friends with your boss because if you're friends with the boss, they're not going to respect you. But then there's that middle ground of, you know, you want to be on the ground floor with your employees working just as hard as they are to show you that you are not just pointing fingers telling them what to do, what they when they need to do it. You, you're you right there working with them. You're sweating. You're grinding your balls off just with them. And I think a lot of people can respect that. But, um, I, you know, there's a lot of employees out there that are, that, that are sheep. You know, they're sheep. They don't, you know, they're there for a paycheck. They're there to work from nine to five. They're going to go home and drink their beer and smoke their weed and go to bed. I think that, you know, that you have to find a certain type of employee. And when you find that certain type of employee, you need to hang on to them because they will respond to that. They respond with you working with them. They'll respond to your boundaries. And I think you just, you just have to go through people. You have to keep vetting people and just what works, what doesn't work. I think business is not, and communication is not just a set thing that you see here in a book. It's an ongoing process, which it actually does describe in the book, that you have to keep rolling, you have to keep tweaking, you have to keep experimenting, because you're going to find pieces of shit. And nine times out of ten people are pieces of shit. But you're going to find that diamond in the rough in, in that every ten to twenty. You know, but you just got to make it work. You got to stick with your plan. You got to stick with your support to them. You need to be there for them, and hopefully they'll be there for you. Which most of the time they won't be, but you'll get an employee that respects that and appreciates that, and they'll give you their effort. It's not just money is going to give you give them max effort. They're they're gonna they're gonna expect the money, and they're gonna give you the the least amount of effort because that's just how people are. Um, but anyway, the you know the book goes into stuff like that, and it's all very, you know, legalistic and do it this way, do it that way. Okay, whatever. But it's a good point. It's something you can take into real life, and you can apply those things and kind of mold them in your own way. I know that I'm going to do that. So in conclusion, these are some good points: the task behaviors of an authoritarian and a democratic leader. Um, and, you know, where my where I'm at, I think you need to have a little bit of both. You know, you need you need to have both. You know, so something to think about, something to to maybe impl implement in your own business or in your own life. It doesn't even have to be in business; it can be anything. Um, but that's about it. I appreciate you guys watching, and you all have a great day.